was a duty morning for us. We had our morning brief as a crew. It was about two hours after our morning brief, we were on our duty period that we got a call from Coast Guard Sector Charleston, South Carolina, that there was a family who was stranded on a rooftop. And when we flew to the scene, we saw a lot of flooding, a lot of rushing water. We saw vehicles that the water was up to the doors on some of them and had just been abandoned by people. We saw houses where the water was up eight or nine feet. Most of these houses were along the French Quarter Creek and normally they're 10 feet above the water, but these houses were almost submerged by by the rushing water. It was a pretty surprising sight, and we were focused on, on getting to the people to get them out. It was surprising, but at the same time, we were focused on what we had to do. When we arrived on scene, you get to see all the homes that are underwater, and you start seeing people who are in distress. And we asked the people who were down there if anybody needed help to wave a flag. And uh, the first thing we saw was a big red flag being waved around. and seeing people on the rooftops, it, it can be a little frightening, you, you fear for them, uh, but we don't want to rush anything and, and assess the situation and make sure we get it done safely. We located them, we did a lap around their house in the air, and we talked about the best course of action. And we decided to lower our rescue swimmer down to the roof to assist the mother and daughter. It was actually my first time to be hoisted down to a rooftop or neighborhood or anything of that matter. Most of the time it's in a river or out in the ocean. So to see a home partially underwater and actual rapids uh, going by, it can, it can really put the crew in danger, especially me uh, being down on the hook. I always tell myself, you know, I, I got this, but it's, it's, uh, it's not about what I can do, it's what your crew can do as a whole. You know, I might be able to reach these people, but can the helicopter do this in this environment with the trees and the telephone wires? And you know, you don't uh, you don't want to take anything too far that your crew can't bring you back home. We are used to hoisting out on the water, so a rooftop, you know, wasn't out of the question. It gave us a good platform for the basket to be put on, so we could get the survivors into the basket. My flight max set me down right there, disconnected from my hook, and the first thing I saw was all those people staring at me in the face, and I said I wanted to take the mother and child first, and uh, her eyes got really big. You could tell she was nervous, and uh, I briefed her on what my plan was to do and said, I, don't worry, I've done this before, just not this style, but uh, you're going to be all right, and we'll get you out of here. As they came into the helicopter, I could look over my shoulder and, and make sure that there was a safe evolution there getting inside. Our mechanic did a really good job bringing them inside real safely. You could definitely tell the looks on their face, very scared. Probably the first time they've ever been hoisted in a basket from a helicopter. We spend night and day training to do this, and very rare do you get to be the person to go out and do it. So when it happens and uh, you think about all those hours and all those days, you've I've trained for this job. It's very heartwarming. It makes my family feel good, and I, I enjoy it. It's the best job in the world. I wouldn't trade it for anything.